Hello everyone, welcome to my walkthrough of the Worker Bee Challenge. I needed a couple tries to record this because there has been a slightly minor, minor tiny change <laughs> of this. And uh, let's just get started and continue. Hit the start button on this Worker Bee Challenge. It is from no other than John Hammond himself, so shout outs to him, my friend. Give him a follow, jump on his Discord and subscribe to his YouTube. Let's see what this challenge has for us. Okay. I just cleared my browser cache, so let's refresh that real quick. Okay, now it looks nice and sweet. And there will be some honey in for us. Uh, if you're looking at this page, there's not a lot to see. But let's click on this worker bee. And it comes up with an error. So that's some really interesting information. Uh, it's definitely running on Python, which is written here. And if you know Ginger2, it is usually for template injections or some other things you could tamper with during CTFs. And um, yeah, we will use this information in just a bit. So let's leave that open. And now let's just try to hit a website here. Uh, for the easiness, I'll just use example.com. And wow, nice, we got the honey. And the honey is the HTML source code. So really awesome. Uh, we would actually like to return something else. And my friend Oday, um, who did the awesome website refshells.com, definitely check that out with uh, some of our friends. Uh, he said, hey, um, maybe we can bypass this. And we kind of looked at this together. It was a lot of fun. And uh, let me just tell you, okay, Etsy password is usually always a good file just to get. And um, first thing we tried was actually at HTTPS colon slash slash. I'll just copy that so I don't have to type it all the time. And well, it goes through because you definitely uh, need HTTPS there. Because if you do something like example.com, it says, hey, it requires a secure HTTPS connection. So with HTTPS, at the end, it also works, but obviously that's not a file. So we're like, hmm, how can we get past this? And the trick is actually easy. Uh, think of the Python application, hash would actually um, mark a comment. So why not try this? And then we saw, hey, yeah, we got Etsy password. And there is a worker bee user. This is the worker bee challenge. So this should be good, awesome. Now, how do we get past this web application to get remote code execution and then get a shell on the machine? I will show you right now. So stay tuned for that as I open the website that is called Hacktricks. And the tool we're looking for is Werkzeug. It's a German word meaning tool. And um, here you already see that there's a write up that you can also find on another website that is actually popping up right now. Come on, come on. Yes. And the original write up, I think, is dehi.com works like console pin exploit. Um, we will just use this for now because I kind of like hack tricks. And it shows here that based on the pin uh, generation function of Werkzeug, there are a couple of different things that um, are used. So it's some up here, the username, mod name, the app name that is passed to the constructor, and then the mod itself, the UUID and the machine ID. So the tiny difference that I didn't need during the CTF and I need it now, it took me a while to figure that out, actually three recordings, um, is that in this original code of Werkzeug, like in this init.py, let's actually see if we can uh, look at the code here because yeah, there is another thing that is called C group. 
So you will find the machine ID, the random boot ID, and the C group here, along all the other pieces of information that we will now collect. And just be sure that uh, you check the C group as well, because it's not like super highlighted or pointed out here in this website, uh, but still an awesome write-up, still super great, really cool. And these are the bits and pieces of information that we will need. It's also described here. So how do we get the username? That can be done by uh, looking at the process and the process is in proc self and the environment variables are in slash environ. So the user here is workerb. Uh, what would be good at this point in time if we scroll down here and copy that script over in our Visual Studio and save it as exploit the pie. And we scroll up and we see that here's the username. So we want this to be workerb. Uh, save it. Then another piece of information that we need from here, from the error page that we used to get in the beginning, is actually this um, Python 3.8, this package flash app.py, which is the default template. Um, you can copy it over or just replace it here with 3.8. Depends on how you'd like to do it. Um, now we need to know if the app's actually initialized with any name or it's just Flask that is the standard one. So here we will see that this is our script. This is where our script is. And we'll copy that over. Go back here. And now we will leak the script itself. Isn't that cool? Like, how did John Hammond come up with this awesome challenge? And we can see here that Flask is just initialized with a standard uh, constructor call. And we're good to leave this upper part the way it is now. And now let's get the um, private bits. And this is specific to the container, to the challenge, to the server. And um, we'll switch back here and see that machine ID is actually the value in Etsy machine ID. Um, I know that this value is actually empty. And uh, I hope that didn't change in the last 10 seconds. But I was just show you for demonstration purposes. So there's nothing that comes back here. So we go on and remember that this is kind of the fallback. Machine ID and uh, we can actually take it directly from the work like source code. This is also fine. And just take anything that is in your autocomplete list and we get the boot ID. And the boot ID in the CTF was actually enough to be put in here. But now there comes the little tiny difference. Since we also have the, um, the C group. And previously that was empty. Somehow that was not required be because maybe um, now after the CTF, this is run in a container group or something and affects actually the application now. So what you have to understand is here we get um, read line strip. So read line is actually just one line. So that is what we will do. We will also only copy one line and this is this line. So now let's create a new script. Put this into um, colon or no, it's not. It's quotes. Sorry. C group. And then let's just say shebang user bin Python 3 and let's save it at test.py. So that is the line. And now we just go here to our work site and say, obviously not read line, but we copy this and say C group uh, dot strip. And if we put a print statement, and brackets around this and run this. Let's hope it works. No, there's a little error. Let's see if we can remove this. Must be string, not bytes. Okay, here we got it. Here we got the string. So just tamper a little bit with it. Um, 
it is good practice and paste this after what we just got. Uh, let's see if we actually did not mess it up too much. No, that's still the same. So even if we would kept it that way, it's still the same, which is good, which is a good sign. So now the last piece of information we need is this uh, number. And this number is, uh, we can close that one now. This number is actually, by the way, here's a little typo. Um, I will send a pull request to Hectrix just to let them know that they forgot the D actually, since we copied it from the Workflex source uh, directly, we did not fall into that trap. Um, but now we need the um, MAC address, and this is done by going to procnet arp to actually figure out um, what are the known um, IP addresses and devices. And this is F0. So if we go back here and we copy this and replace device ID with F0, this should basically um, give us what we need. Okay, now let's do a GPS, go on, slash, slash. And there it is, success, awesome. So we go over here and um, let's just uh, comment this out and paste it here, put some brackets around it, put a print statement in front of it and then an OX so it becomes hexadecimal since it is hexadecimal, but we want it in decimal. And that is the decimal representation that we copy over in our script, save it, run it. And here is our pin code. And now I'm super pumped. I'm really excited if we actually made it, if that's correct. So we remove everything back there, right slash console. So if you've done Jinja apps before and the, uh, these are running in developer mode, these come with an interactive console that is actually pin protected and we can now click confirm and we're in. Yay! Isn't that awesome? Really cool. So what we do now, we just use the uh, general Python shell. And um, since we are in a CTF environment, I don't know if you use a, a VPS for that or uh, whatever. Uh, but what else you would use? I just use ngrok here as an example. So I have Spencer set up that will basically spawn a listener. Then I will do uh, ngrok TCP1234. And then after one, two seconds, I will get this here, ngrok. Oh, I hit. Uh, control C uh, by accident without holding my shift key. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we call take this and now we go to refshells.com. Shout out to Ryan and the boys. And here we will do Python. Uh, we will actually enter our it actually copies it right away to the clipboard. So we have to do that again. And 13772, we can type that. Okay, and now uh, we actually want to use Python 2 here. Let's copy that over. Copy. Go to the console, paste it here. And now let's make this a little bit more exciting for us. Let's put these next to each other and then let's hit return oh yeah we got a shell woohoo now since we know there's python on the machine we can easily upgrade the shell and well we need to export term x term so we can clear it awesome let's see what is the way to root the root is sudo, so we do sudo su, we change to the root folder, list the folder, cat flag.txt, 
and we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this quick recording. It has been around 15 minutes. If you like what I do, feel free to jump on my Discord, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter, or just tune out and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.